After Apple's introduction of the App Store in 2008, the playing field for mobile gaming shifted over the years. Nintendo, who had the main dominance for decades, now has a new competitor, the iPod Touch. And this rivalry hit its peak in 2010 when the new iPod Touch 4 came out, going up against Nintendo's DSi. So let's compare the two to see what consumers experienced back then. The DSi already housed a bunch of unique apps on it, like Flipnote, a stop-motion animation app, or the camera, but we'll mention that further, but let me just say, this is ahead of its time, and that's not a joke. Of course, something that was brand new to a device like this was the App Store. Now you can download software online. And there was other stuff like being able to listen to your music by uploading files from your SD card, which also that in and of itself is a unique feature compared to the iPod. But for the iPod side, it really was a device that was just beyond gaming. Obviously at first the idea was for it to be a touchscreen music player, but with the addition of the App Store, it's a lot more universal. You can also watch movies and videos on it, and of course explore miscellaneous apps, some of which are free. But more on that subject in the conclusion. While the DSi has your usual Mario Kart, Super Mario Bros, and really almost any Pokemon game is good to play, it also has some pretty good third-party games like Scribblenauts, Kingdom Hearts, and GTA Chinatown. You can put a good few hours into all these games. As for the iPod Touch, also let me remind you that the gameplay on the iPod is pre-recorded because you can't download these games anymore because it's such an old iOS system. Anyways, some of its games include Fruit Ninja, Angry Birds, Plants vs. Zombies, Jetpack Joyride, Temple Run, and a bunch of others. For those games, there's only so much that you could play of them, but we'll talk about that later. The iPod has a 0.7 megapixel camera with 720p video. This is definitely a lot more of a camera I'd use to share photos on Facebook and, and whatever kids used in 2010. While the DSi has a 0.3 megapixel camera, only taking photos at 480p. But one interesting thing about the camera, remember the DSi came before Snapchat and other apps that would give you the true ability to play around with filters and photos. The DSi's camera had all these wacky features on it. I'd guess Nintendo did this because they're trying to be self-aware that yeah this camera sucks so it takes advantage of it by making it fun if you compare some of these photos at least compared to the ipod it's pretty solid at times Imagine being a kid and owning a device that on top of games can also play music, movies, internet videos, and become a lightsaber. Yeah, that one probably hit your nostalgia buds now. The best way honestly to put it is that the iPod's biggest advantage was the App Store. It was such a thriving community of game developers as well as miscellaneous ones too, but the biggest drawback that it has is that the games, paid or free, don't have the same quality that you'd find on the DS. Now that's not to say that every game on the DS is quality, but the one specific specifically from Nintendo themselves, can be played for such a longer period of time. And that's because, well, mainly, the DSi was made for games. I mean, unless you're one of those guys that plays music on their DSi, no shame. I mean, yeah, back in the day, Fruit Ninja and Temple Run and Jetpack Joyride were all fun to play, but I could spend a lot more time playing Pokemon. Can you tell only recently I got into that game? Yeah, it's amazing. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.